Hi everyone, once again we are back. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for those of you who tuned in last week and got to listen to the message. If you were not able to tune in, please we encourage you to make sure that you uh, check us out on YouTube, on RGC, Liberty Christian Center, so that you can flow with the service. Once again, my name is Irene Elijah. I want to invite you to today's service. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be impacting because we have, um, we have added more stuff for you guys, and we invite you to be together with us. Uh, for us to be able to start, I want us to take a moment and go before the Lord with a word of prayer, after which I'm going to invite uh, Minister Becky, who is going to lead us into a time of praise and worship. And after that, we are going to have one of our greatest teachers, teacher um, Eric, coming to teach us what the Lord has instructed him. Let's go before the Lord with a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we honor you this morning. Thank you for once again giving us an opportunity to come before your presence so that we can uh, pray, so that we can listen to you, so that we can listen to what you have given into uh, through your servant. We welcome you, Holy Spirit of the living God, so that you may enable us to learn what the Father has and even to be able to do the same. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we do pray and give thanks. Amen. Thank you. Minister Becky, please take us on. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. We want to go before the Lord in worship. So kindly join me as we worship the Lord for His grace that which is sufficient through this time. Hallelujah. We give you glory, Lord, as we happy to speak to you right from your sitting room or your home, wherever you are. Uh, we really thank God for this opportunity that he's given us to be able to, to fellowship and to be able to share something uh, from the word. Because every time you interact with the God's word, your life never remains uh, the same. And so I believe in the next 20 or so minutes, uh, we are going to receive God's word and it will change you. So that's what I want you to, to believe. And uh, 
as uh, you've been uh, told, my name is Eric Wanjala. Uh, I teach Sunday school, yeah, but today I've been requested to speak to the Majestics. The Majestics are a bit senior than the class that I teach, uh, the Shama. So I'm so much privileged uh, to stand here today and to share God's word. And so I've got just very few objectives, which I believe by the end of uh, this um, 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 sharing, uh, you should be able to, to understand uh, God's word in its uh, tr uh, truth, uh, truthfulness. So the first thing that I would like us to understand is uh, what is our position uh, in God's family? And in a family setup, of course, we understand. There are several members. There's a father, there's a mother, there are children, You've got siblings, you've got, you know, house managers, the people who ensure that you are really comfortable at home. So that is a family setup. And so in this family, there, there is, there is uh, relationships, there is fellowship, and there is something that bonds these people, you know, to thrive together in that small bubble that they are in. And so it is important to understand uh, what is your position in that family. But over and above that, there is a bigger family. There's a bigger eternal family uh, whose head, of course, is God. And we are the children. We are part and parcel of this big and eternal family. So we need to understand what is our uh, obligation in this family? What roles do we really have to, to play? What rights do we have in this eternal kingdom of God? What are we entitled to? And so it is really important for us to understand that. Uh, back to our Bible reading today, I want us to read from the book of Romans. Romans chapter 8, uh, from verse 15 uh, to 17. Uh, the Bible says, So you should not be like cowering, fearful slaves. You should behave like a God's own children, adapted into his family, calling him Abba, Father. Now, that's a very, very powerful uh, scripture because it gives the setting of the family that I have just uh, talked about. And so there are just three things I would like us to, uh, to get from this. And I know the Lord is going to, to bless you. So number one is that in a family, there is fellowship. In a family, there is fellowship. And in this eternal family with God, there's also fellowship with the father. And the father fellowships with us, his children. And so even us, as his children, we have an obligation to fellowship with the, with the father. Verse 15 says, we have been adapted into God's family. So we are children in God's kingdom. And verse 17 says, we receive the same treasure like Christ. Now Christ is receiving this treasure the same way even as we are receiving it. But it is one God that is giving uh, this uh, treasure. And so that means we are joint heirs with Christ, that Christ is the firstborn in the kingdom of God. He is our elder sibling. And so we are his brothers, we are his sisters. And that's what forms uh, this eternal uh, 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 family of God. So we belong to God's uh, um, family. Now God fellowships with us in this family. And there are so many things that he does to us just to bring this fellowship closer to us. The Bible says that his mercies are new every morning. Why are his mercies new? Because he's seeking to fellowship with us. That's why every morning his mercies are new. The Bible says that he renews our strength. Why? Because it is fellowship. He's seeking to fellowship with us. The Bible says in Psalms that he makes us to lie down in green pastures. He leads us beside the still waters. He leads us in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Why? It is fellowship that God is seeking. The Bible says that he protects us because he says no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Now that protection, it is part of the fellowship that God brings uh, to us. If I may take you back to the book of Genesis uh, 3.8, the Bible says that God will come into the garden in the cool of the day just to walk around. And as he was walking around, of course he was walking with Adam and Eve. That was fellowship that God was bringing, you know, to our four parents, Adam, and Eve. 
And so out of this fellowship that God brings to us, what is our obligation? How are we supposed to conduct ourselves in this family so that we give this fellowship back um, to our Father? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 1, 9 that we have been called into fellowship with God right here on earth. And that is something that we ought to be doing each and every day. You cannot belong in God's family and you do not fellowship with the Father. Then you don't deserve to be in that family. So you need to understand that right here on earth, our very first obligation is that we must fellowship with God because we have been called into fellowship uh, with our Father. And we don't just have a relationship because you can have a relationship with somebody and it just ends there. But rather than just having a relationship, we should also have a fellowship. So please keep this at the back of your mind. That on top of the relationship, please also have a fellowship. And in the, in the commercial you know, world, you know people have relationships, but they don't have fellowships. And that's what we call a contract, because there is no human face um, in that. But when you put a, a, a fellowship into a relationship, then it becomes a friendship. And that's what God is seeking uh, from us, that we should be his friends because he stretched forth his friendship to us. And so we should also reciprocate because you can't say that, you know, you are a, a friend to so-and-so, yet it's only one party that is trying to reach out to you to show friendship and you, you know, you are just held back. There's nothing that you are giving into this friendship and relationship. So it has to be two-way because two people cannot work together unless they agree. So we must, in as much as you are relating with God, but we must also fellowship um, with him. And so that means that you need to know him personally. Okay? Because it might look very, very strange if somebody comes to your house and he introduces you to your father. Or somebody introduces uh, your father to you. You know, in a way that it's like you've, you, you've never met. That is a very, very strange kind of relationship. But since this is your father, he does not need somebody to introduce him to you. And since you are his child, you, he, he does not need anyone to introduce you to him because he knows you. There is that personal connection. There is that, you know, a, a, a close bond that the moment your presence manifests, then he knows this is my son, this is my daughter, this is my child. The moment God appears, you know, this is my father. That is the close relationship that God really wants. So do you really know God personally? That is a question that I would like to, um, to, to put across to you. And as I said, God is not seeking to, to get into a contract with us, but he's seeking for friendship. So there is relationship and then there is fellowship. Then that means that you also need to involve God in the little things that you do. You know, we keep on hearing our God is so, so big, and sometimes that one scares us because we think God is also big such that we cannot really approach. But do you know what? He knows the number of hairs on your head. When strand number 100 uh, you know, falls off your head, he knows. That means he cares about the little things that you do. There is nothing that happens to you that he does not know. And so he also wants to hear your little things, the things that you know you feel like these are too, too informal, these I cannot even share with God. Those are the things that you should be able to share with God because he is your father and he's also your, your, your friend. And so, share with him the little things that you go through. When you wake up in the morning, say hi, hi, hi to you, my father. Hello, papa. You know, such an informal kind of um, 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 conversation that should just flow out spontaneously without any, anybody coercing you to do it. Wake up in the morning to sing songs. You know, David says, I, 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 I sing of your goodness, of your power, and of your greatness. And that one comes because there is that close relationship that you know you have with God. Share with God your schedule. When you wake up in the morning, tell God, by the day I'm waking up, today I want to clean the house, today I want to read, today I want to, you know, uh, um, um, help out with some house calls or whichever thing that you've planned to do. Share your schedule with God because he loves it when he hears it from you because there is 
a relationship. And then let God be part of your decision making. Don't just decide to do things without involving God. So it is important and critical that involve God in every little thing that you do. When you step out of the house, tell God, God, I'm going out. Watch over me, protect me. When you're sent out to the marketplace, tell God, I'm going there, please protect me. And even when you go astray, do not run away, but run back to him. It doesn't mean that when you go astray that you've lost your salvation. No. Even when David sinned against God, he said, restore the joy of my salvation. It is only the joy that had disappeared, but his salvation was still intact. But he knew where to, to run to. So even you, it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter the things that you've gone through. But when you've gone astray, run back to your father because of that fellowship, because of that friendship. Tell him the things that you are unable to do. Like Solomon, you know, he said, I'm just a little child. I do not know even how to, to, uh, to, to walk around, to go in and come out. But he prayed to God, you know, give me knowledge to discern what is good and what is evil so that I, I can govern your people. And God gave him wisdom and he made him to be rich because of that close friendship and relationship with God. So I'm calling upon us today. Let us learn to fellowship with God. Do not ignore the presence of God in your life. Do not ignore God's position in the small, small things that you do because he cares about you. Now, the second thing I want us to, to learn from this scripture, in verse 15, the Bible says, you know, um, the spirit of adoption makes us to cry, Abba, Father. Now, Abba, it means Father. But it is a more of um, a very, a word that you use when you have a very deep connection with, the, with, the, with, the, with the somebody. And we see Jesus using this word when he was at the Garden of Gethsemane in, in, in Mark 14, 36, where he said, Abba, Father, everything is possible before you. Please remove this cup, take away this cup from me, but not my will, but your will be done. It was really a very intense prayer made out of distress, out of, out of pain, because of the premonitions of the things that were really going to, to happen on him. And so he used Abba, Father. That means he was very, very close with God. And he called him because, he only called him Abba, Father, because he knew it was only God who could be able to take away that cup. And so, in the most impossible things that you feel no other person can do, you should call upon God. And even during this time, when you are going through some very um, uh, turbulent times because of the pandemic, we need to call upon God, whatever seems not to work. I know I'm speaking to some of us who are in school. You know, the, we, are, we are in May. Normally other years, a time like now you're in school. Maybe you're a candidate who should be revising. And so you're wondering, how am I going to sit for this examination? I'm not in school, I'm not learning. Call upon him, tell him, tell him, tell him your distress, tell him your challenge, because he is your Abba Father. And the Bible says in Jeremiah 33, 3, that call unto me and I will hear, and I will, I will answer, and I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. So as children in this kingdom of God, we have a right to call upon him. Psalms 50, uh, verse 15 the uh, Bible says that, call unto me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you. That is God, our Father. So we have a right. We have a right. As children in the kingdom of God, we have a right to call upon him. So I will implore you, my brothers and sisters, don't just die in, in distress and yet you have not talked to your father. You have not told him what is bothering you. Actually, the solution to your problem is as near or rather, it can be, the solution can be given as fast as you, know, you, you pray. So get into this habit of calling upon God in prayer. Then the last thing I would like us to, to learn, and uh, we'll be finishing, is that we need to conquer fear. In verse 15 um, of Romans 8, uh, the Bible says that you, know, we, um, you should not be like slaves uh, who are so, so fearful, but... We, 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 uh, we have been adopted into God's family. So fear cannot be our portion. Because initially, there was a lot of fear. We were like slaves, and we were actually slaves to, to sin. But when Christ came, 
he died for us, we are no longer slaves because we have been adopted into God's family. And so me and Christ, we are siblings. We are, we are brothers. He is, he is my elder brother. And he is also your elder brother and, and, and sister. So there should be no fear. Um, in 2 Timothy 1, uh, 1, 7, the Bible says, we have not received a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. So fear cannot dare, uh, you know, um, uh, 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 marinate in your mind, irrespective of whatever you are really uh, going through. And since we belong in this big family, you cannot belong to a big family and remain small. That one cannot work. If you are a child of a president, you, you, you cannot walk with a lot of fear because, you know, my daddy is somewhere, he's a, he's, a, he's, he's a big person. And so, out of that revelation, it should be able to make you to be bold. And you should be bold to even ask for big things. The Bible says in Psalms 2, 8, that ask me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance. So why should you fear to ask God the big things that you know, you, 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 you're trusting him for. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 21 that when you, know, when you go to war, you see your enemies, you see the chariots, you see the horses, you see the armies, how big they are. The Bible says, do not fear because I will be with you. I took you out of Egypt, so I will also be with you even during that moment. So you should not fear. And this again to my brothers and sisters who are, who are, who are in school. Don't just read those books, and then when you get to those hard topics, you say, now, this one, I will, I, will, I will fail. You know, like, for instance, you are reading physics. Then you get to, there's this topic, I don't know whether it is in, in, in secondary, called uh, quantum mechanics. Once you get there, then you say, ah, he, me, he, he, me, he, he, No, 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 no. You are actually manifesting the fear in you. But the Bible says that God has not given you the spirit of fear but he's given you the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. So when you read those books, read them with an attitude that I'm going to pass. I'm going to excel. In fact, as you read, like if you're reading biology, imagine yourself, you are either a doctor somewhere, and you are giving an, a, 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 you know, an, a, a, a professional advice you know, with, with regard to what you are, you are reading. If you are reading, for instance, physics, know that I'll be an engineer somewhere. You are reading some circuits, Imagine you are designing some circuit for a very, you know, complicated system. And so you are reading it from a point of victory, knowing that I'm going to excel, but I'm not going to fail. And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, that we should cast out every imagination and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And one thing that exalts itself in us, it is fear. So the Bible is saying, cast out that imagination of fear. Because you are not a slave to fear, but you belong to the family of God. You belong to a higher kingdom. Amen? So I would will, I will, I like to end with a, a very short story. Uh, a story is told of a very young girl. She was on a plane. And uh, as they were flying up, you know, the plane flew into some clouds. And so there was a lot of turbulence. And the plane was really shaking terribly. And uh, everybody was afraid. And they felt, hey, this plane is going to, uh, to crash. And so everybody started praying, you know, praying to, uh, to God to really come and rescue them. But this young girl just maintained her cool. In fact, she was just playing with uh, her toys. And suddenly the turbulent moment was, was over. And so the plane was back to, to normalcy. And so there was this old man who was seated close to this girl. And then he asked her, how come everybody was afraid but you are not? And the girl said, uh, the pilot of this plane is my father. And we have been in more terrible, we've hit more terrible, you know, turbulent moments. But he's always landed us safely. So I did not have any reason to fear. And that is the challenge I want to pose to you. Do you really know your God? that you can be able to steer that plane to safe landing because he is your father. And he knows that you are on that plane. And so he knows what he is doing. So I call upon us today, do not fear. Trust God. Everything is in control. And no harm will come near you. Amen?
So I, I, I would like, I, I would like to, to end. During this time, I've had some time to, write, to keep on writing some things. And I wrote a very short poem, which I, I would like Becky to just come and decide. And I pray that God will bless you, even as you, you listen to, to it. And then I will come and pray with us. God is here to care. He comes in a flare, not like a giant to scare but in a quiet way to care, for he's always there. He's there in a, first, in a baby's first cry and in a dying man's last sigh. His will still shines like stars and vibes with a hype to revamp. When you bite a yellow mango that causes you to mellow, as you sap the irons in wallow, for he cares for your marrow. Even when you thrust a glass to quench your thirst, it's him that waters and showers every hour to make it work. His peace over hovers to cover, his peace is beyond measure, and his grace is always in place and in excess for your access. He cares for your affairs, and he always tears your fears and wears your snares to gear up for a cheer. I believe you've been blessed with that uh, short poem and so I would like us to, to pray and uh, trust God that our fellowship will even be far much better, that we will not fear but we will put our trust in him. So let's pray. Our Father in Jesus' name we thank you this moment that you've given us to share uh, from your word and thank you Lord because you've adopted us into your family and because of that adoption the Bible says that we are not like slaves to fear. And so today we come before you and we pray that, Lord, every form of fear in our hearts and in our minds, for whatever reason, may it be lifted out of us in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will give us boldness to ask you for great things. I pray that you will give us boldness to trust you, even for things that we've never imagined. And so, Lord, I cover even my brothers and sisters who've listened to this message. I pray that let this word, Lord, dwell in their hearts. May it even bear much fruit. May it transform them and may it cause them, Lord, to be the people that you desire them to be. I pray for them, Lord, every um, um, majestic, um, even um, um, member uh, who, who are at home right now, Lord, I pray that may you stretch forth your hand to cover them. May you protect them, O oh God. I pray that your word will bring reassurance into their hearts that, Lord, it will not cause them to fear, but that, Lord, they will have boldness to face whatever comes ahead of them. And so, Father, I pray that you cover them. I pray that you bless them, that you watch over them. They are going out and coming, you know, my Father. May you be the one to watch over them and to protect them. May you bless their, their families, bless their, their parents, bless their, their siblings, and everything that they do, oh God. May it prosper for the glory and honor of your name. I pray this believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us, and God bless you. We'll meet again next Sunday. Shalom. I will praise you, Lord, for your grace of my life. You have blessed me, O oh Father. Now I dance like a winner. Man. I will praise you, Lord, for your grace of my life. Bless me, O oh Father, now I dance like a winner man. I will praise you, Lord, for your grace on my life. You have blessed me, O oh Father, now yeah. I dance like a winner man. So when you see me dance, I dance like a winner man. When you see me Come dance, on. I dance like a winner man. Oh, when you see me dance, I dance like a winner man. When you see me dance, I dance ah. like a winner man. So when you see me dance,
my life. You are blessed me, oh Father. Now I dance like a winner. I will praise you, Lord, for your grace on my life. You have blessed me, oh Father. Now I dance like a winner. When you see me dance, I dance like a winner. Are you a winner? Are you a winner? Oh. 